again and I guess we are going to continue now with maxillary molars and <clears throat> of course when we always start we start with the approximate size so let's box in approximate size for teeth So, these teeth are more square-shaped than in the dura. Approximately. Uh, again, same rules apply. Uh, taper towards the distal, except in cases with a very large uh, distal distal lingual distal palatal cusp whatever you call it and these tapers so um this tooth has a very large mesial buccal cusp should have drawn the box. I think this is a mistake on my part. It should be even lower. So this is going to be the tricky part because this screw actually helps the drawing a bit. This part should be explain what I just did. So our mesia, mesia line is fairly straight compared to distal. Distal is again rounded. We kept the taper in place. Sorry. Uh, we kept the taper in place. Let's zoom in here. Um, in both directions. Um, I added this line in because I wanted to make sure uh, where I place my uh, mesolingual, mesopalatal cusp. It's like it's uh, sort of moved, the cusp tip is a bit more towards the center. And I added this in line for our rather small uh, distal lingual cusp. Anyway, <clears throat> we have drawn in the basic outline. What we then add is our sort of center point, center axis of our tooth. So here and uh, the most distinct grooves, so we have a, a buckle groove. You can always add in the letters indicating our size. Most likely, I'm going to call this side palatal, but it's the same as lingual. It's as we meant, as I mentioned in practical class before. But for um, upper molars, it's usual to say palatal surface, not lingual, as the palate is behind these teeth, not uh, the tongue. Anyway, uh, moving forward, so we can now add in our buccal group. Uh, we also have our central groove that's interrupted by the oblique ridge, and, and but we can draw it on the side already. Goes like something like this. And now we have a very uh, small uh, distal cusp. You can sort of imagine it like a sort of like a semicircle here, and the groove will go like this.
So these are the basic grooves. And for the center groove, we added a thin line over our oblique ridge. Um, indicating the cusp tips. Then aiming towards the center. Kind of except this one. So, um, a rough shape of our uh, maxillary first uh, molar. Uh, now the supplemental grooves come in play because they make uh, us understand where the bleak ridge is a bit better. So, uh, we add one here. Add one here. They follow the same direction as our uh, ridge. And here would be a rather small one. So this now, oh, actually, I've drawn sort of a mistake. I think you should better draw two lines here. So this is now our our oblique ridge, and again we should you should make these fuss a bit more distinct. And this is a very deep groove actually, the one going here. And this cusp is lower than the rest of them significantly. I shall try to show you this on this tooth. I'm not sure whether or not you can see it. Uh, this is a filling I made in my free time. This is a plastic tooth, as you can see. Um, and you can see, if you look from the side, it's a small cusp. And, and look, judging by the surface, you can also see it's, it's super small compared to the rest of them. And it has this very distinct groove. Uh, we can also on this tooth you can see the oblique ridge here and our buccal groove and the central groove going there. And for this tooth you also have this, what it's called, a tuberculum carabelli. And if we, you want to draw it, you can draw an indication for it here below the cusp. It should maybe even lower actually should not cross this line, of course. You can draw an indication that it is there somewhere. So, uh, in essence, this would be it. We, we can add in our supplemental grooves also on the side. And two grooves here as well. So, this would probably be our maxillary molar, our rough shape at least. Okay. Make it location of our cusp a bit more distinct actually. Sorry for the bumping into camera. So we can actually lower this groove I think up even to So, this would be a drawing for the first molar. Mm, pretty unique tooth, asymmetrical, I'd say an interesting tooth in essence. For this uh, tooth, it's important for you to understand the oblique ridge, where it is, and to uh, always write the name of the structure on the side. Um, yeah, I think we covered this tooth well, for now at least. Of course you can do this better and you can see I'm rather drawing this fast so the video will be a 50 minutes of me just rambling. Oh, also a suggestion. If you have any questions regarding the structures, uh, you can try to write them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer any questions you have and maybe give some more tips if you want. Um, yeah, 
So uh, I think we're done with this tooth. Now for the second molar. This tooth is a bit more tricky, I think, uh, because it's narrower mesiodistally than the than the first molar, and sometimes it can have only three cusps. I'm, however, I'm gonna draw the four cusp version. I'm just gonna first off, I'm gonna try to draw the shape more narrower. And it's sort of sometimes you can say that this tooth it has a, like a, a parallel gram. Sorry if I, if I butchered the pronunciation sort of like this shape, it's like a swooshed building, sort of. It's actually good to give uh, names to the structures you draw. That's the way I first learned it. It helps in your head to, to sort of understand what is what. Um, uh, for example, I know when I was drawing this too, if I, I call this part the onion, when I, I remember I have to draw a half moon, one onion, and uh, I think I, there was some structure I remember I called a, a boot, <laughs> but it, I think it, 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 it was like this, a supplemental line like that. Uh, yeah, well, in, in essence, all these small things, they help you uh, remember the structures, uh, you make associations. That's basically one of the ways memory works. You already, oh, you don't know this yet, but you will learn about this in physiology in the second year. Um, so, this would be our outline. Uh, you can see its tooth is narrower. Now, it your distal than the main one. We still have a central point. And our axis. So, can draw in. For this tooth, sometimes uh, this cusp is even smaller, sometimes it's actually bigger, so it, it really has this very distinct shape. The variation uh, for molars is quite significant, actually. So this is just one of the things you're going to see in your life and hopefully remember. So we have this. side, can have it go across, okay, let's draw it on, or groove, I think I might have uh, mispronounced this groove, but uh, check the lecture, it has every, all of the correct names, even if I'm and uh, misnaming something, uh, you can always double check the lecture. Sometimes I get mi mixed up a bit. I know it's a, not a good excuse, but, uh, but you can at least always double check. So all of our fossils should be and fits. Okay. We got the indication of our cusps. when I was first drawing I didn't draw uh, these indications or where the cusps of the central ridges are and the drawings are a lot harder to understand when you don't have these rather three rather small lines but they help a lot actually um, so now our turn uh, again our oblique ridge make our small grooves indicating its location now we can make again a few small supplemental ones. Well, basically that's it, I think. Um, you can do this better, um, of course. Hopefully you will. And I will draw a small, super small version for the three cusp type. It sometimes has this sort of a hard shape. It's not that actually that uh, rare that you have these teeth. So uh, an out approximate outline would be like this. It has like 
a buckle groove to the central one. And that's it. <laughs> Two supplementals on each side. One very big in the middle. Sometimes we have uh, the second model look is this heart shape variant without even without this uh, distal angle cusp. But in essence, uh, for exam, I would like you and, and in general for life, I would like you to to understand this shape as the most common one, as the sort of most important one. And yeah, I think this is it for our maxillary molars. The structures, uh, I would like you to try in the same way as we did with, as we did, sorry for the noise, uh, as we did with our mandibular uh, molar, and then you're all set. Of course, you'll have to draw every quadrant, so a total of eight teeth again. You don't have to draw uh, the wisdom teeth. The, the shape is too variable. Uh, and, and actually not that important because usually they resemble uh, either one of the first, uh, for example, uh, maxillary third molar would resemble either the first or the second molar. Uh, usually they are actually this uh, heart-shaped variant. And in the mandible, in the mandible, the, the shape is again quite usually quite similar to either the second or the or the first molar, but it's not the same. 